good evening, everyone. Um, as Chip said, my name is Joy Russell. I'm the Vice President of Business Development and Communications for Holtec. Been there for over 21 years. Um, it's my pleasure to be here tonight to meet you. I had the opportunity to meet several of you earlier at the Open House. I appreciate the open dialogue. We'll be here after to continue the dialogue, should you choose to do so. Be happy to provide to you um, facts about our high store facility, facts about storage of spent nuclear fuel, transportation of spent nuclear fuel. Um, and and I, overall, I ask, I come here asking for your support. Um, I appreciate the sign. Could you put it down because I like to see? Thank you. Thank you. Because I, I know what it says. <laughs> I, I like to see what everyone looks like. Thank you. Um, our partner, the Eddie Lee Alliance, um, who members of that alliance are here tonight, was formed in 2006 to help you diversify the area, the economics of the area, and to help encourage economic growth in the area, and we're happy to be a part of that. Um, Holtec International, my company, is a strong technology company. We, our core business has been and is the storage the safe storage of spent nuclear fuel has been for the past 32 years. 60% of the nuclear plants in the United States safely use our dry storage equipment every day with no issues, no incidents. We're very happy, we're very proud of that. Um, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has licensed all of those systems and they regulate that, the systems. They regulate the industry very rigorously. All of the equipment that we supply at, from Holtec is made here in the United States. We're an American company. We have three manufacturing facilities here in the United States, and we are the largest exporter of nuclear products. We have factories in Ohio, Pittsburgh, and in Camden, New Jersey. We're an American company, and we're very proud of that. We have an impeccable safety record. None of our equipment has ever experienced a safety issue, leaked as you so call it, but I would like to point out, spent nuclear fuel is not a liquid, it can't leak. Woo! What about the heat? Thank you. Okay, let's, let's allow Joy to finish our remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the members of ALEA had asked Holtec to be their partner in 2013 after performing a very rigorous evaluation about the safety and security of our dry storage system. We, our storage system stores the canister completely below grade. Unlike what we've heard here this evening, it does not sit 12 inches above the ground. I ask that you guys come and talk to us, come and get the facts. You need to listen to both sides of the story before you make your decision. That's, that's your prerogative, I understand that. Okay, we have asked the NRC to review our license application. The NRC will perform a rigorous evaluation and review, taking into consideration all of your comments this evening. And we look forward to that review and re responding to any information that is requested of us. The, the people here in the state of New Mexico are very well versed in technology. You have a very technically savvy state, especially in the nuclear technology industry, with two national laboratories, no, no, no. both with offices in Carlsbad. You have three Air Force bases, one Army base, and in, in this particular area of New Mexico, you also have WIP and Urenco. Uh, the geology, the site characteristics, environment, and other factors in this region are actually ideal and very well suited for the storage of spent nuclear fuel. Cave country. Our goal, our goal is to offer a temporary, right. safe, and secure used fuel storage facility to store the nation's used nuclear fuel. We vow, we commit to be good stewards of the environment and also good neighbors. And if you could just sum up for Absolutely. us, Julie. Thank you. Um, and and I, I look forward to speaking with any of you that wish to speak with us. Again, my colleagues and our uh, partners from Malia will be 
in the, uh, the, the adjacent room after. Thank you very much for your time and your attention. Thank you, Jay. Thank you very much. Um, Dan. Excuse me. This is Steve Schaefersman. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you, uh, NRC, for uh, scheduling this unscheduled scoping session tonight. Uh, I am a consulting scientist in Midland. I work in both the petroleum and environmental industries. I, in Midland, I live downwind from a potential burning interim waste site with its radioactive active plume. Uh, I can't think of a, uh, I have taught environmental science, environmental geology, and environmental law. I'm very experienced in uh, uh, sites, waste sites. I've been, to, I've been to six different Superfund sites in Houston where I, where I got my PhD at Rice, and I'm, I, I know uh, I've been opposed to these uh, sites from the beginning. Uh, I can't think of a worse place, well I can, but it's, it's hard to think of a worse place to choose for uh, placing an interim waste site than right here. The area is surrounded by uh, aquifers, some close, some far. Uh, the sediments, the sediments in the sedimentary rock are porous and permeable. Uh, the thin uh, barrier they claim is being on the top is not sufficient. It's it's just like the WCS site, which is which is really no better. Uh, so this is not a good place to uh, put a hazardous waste site, especially one for nuclear waste. Um, I could go into much more detail about these since I am a geologist and understand this stuff, but I'm not. Uh, the exposed casks uh, on the surface are subject to terrorism. Uh, they ex are exposed and a, and a simple attack with uh, heavy, heavy explosives would create that burning plume that I spoke of without much difficulty. Uh, there are soluble rocks below the site, uh, limestone and rock salt. Uh, there is karst limestone in the area, which is uh, a soluble limestone that uh, develops caverns. The caverns collapse and sinkholes develop. Uh, it, it is conceivable that a sinkhole would, would uh, collapse and take down the depository with it, which would be a, a terrible, colossal tragedy. Uh, in addition, there, there is the soluble salado formation below that. Uh, in West Texas, unplugged wells carry fluids to this formation, uh, the, salts, the salt dissolves and sinkholes develop. Uh, this is a matter of fact. Now, I can't be sure how close these are to the aquifers, but there, there is a, uh, several aquifers nearby, especially the Capitan Reef Aquifer. I need more detailed maps to be sure, but uh, that's the aquifer that has developed Carlsbad Caverns. Uh, this is just not a good place to, to site this. Uh, what about transportation issues? Uh, there is a, you always have to do a risk-benefit analysis. There is a risk to transporting these, these hazardous materials. <clears throat> uh, 10,000 canisters uh, is calculated in a risk-benefit analysis that there would be one accident. That would be uh, a terrible uh, calamity. If you uh, double that, that transportation to move it a second time, that would double the risk. You would have possibly two. You might have none, but you might have four. It's just, uh, it's just a... Uh, a statistical uh, calculus. Does the risk, is the risk ever acceptable? Yes. If you transport the, uh, the waste once to a permanent waste depository, the risk is acceptable. And that's what should be done. Steve, could you sum up sure. this, please? Thank you. <clears throat> So, uh, why was the site put here, uh, proposed for this place, or for that matter, the one in Andrews County? Uh, they, the, the companies want to exploit the region's uh, assumed favoritism for free enterprise and business. They also want to uh, use who they think uh, are people who don't care much about dangers, but just want to get the jobs. In fact, the jobs are very few, and the, the dangers are enormous. The, uh, the uh, oil companies provide plenty of jobs now, so uh, the, this, is, this is not a, a, uh, a good situation. Um, the reason for this, 
for this proposal is that there is a fund of $50 billion that, that the companies want to, to use to, to uh, develop their waste sites. It is likely the interim site, if approved, would become a permanent site for two reasons. First, uh, there would be no more motivation to develop a permanent site because, uh, because the, the companies would, would, uh, would, would no longer have title, the government would. And second, uh, by that time, the $50 billion would be gone because they would be using that money to transport the waste. So I want to make a modest proposal, my last sentence. I propose that we look for a good site, which would be hard igneous rock that is non porous and non permeable, uh, bore into it, place the casks there, uh, call that the interim site, and then in 120 years, change the name to the permanent waste repository. That would solve all of our problems. Thank you very much. Please introduce, please introduce yourself. All right, my name is Cody Rogers. Um, I'm going to be brief as I can possibly. I can never, I can't believe I'm in front of the NRC. Um, I'm an ex-Navy nuke. I've operated nuclear reactors for eight years. I'm a huge proponent of nuclear power. I think we need it. We need to go to France's model. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I was called here today to, along with my fr uh, friends from Midland, to talk about this issue. Uh, this is a major, major, major problem in the United States right now. We have 99 operating nuclear reactors. We do not have anywhere to dispose of the spent fuel, okay? This is a major, major problem, and we have to fix it. I believe the NRC is doing their absolute best to fix this problem. It is, we have been, as Navy nuclear operators, we've been transporting full reactors across state lines on railroads for over 60 years successfully without accident or failure. Now, let me get to the main point that I'm here today. I don't know what you guys have seen when it comes to the studies of the geological parts of Midland, Texas, but we're on the cusp of being the world's largest energy producer. Okay, We are going to control oil very soon. We're going to control our own destiny. So West Texas is one of the most valuable places in the world right now, especially the United States. And unfortunately, because of this, I implore you to look up Dr. Zong Lu's study from SMU. This is very, very new. West Texas is sinking. We're not sinking slowly. We're sinking at a rate of four inches per year. As a matter of fact, it's sinking so fast, we've actually had a lake near Pecos. It's a 4,000 square mile area that is literally sinking beneath us. I, I know we need a site. This is not it. If this thing sinks and we get something like the whip accident that was never supposed to happen, that was a non-serialized container of radioactive waste that they had no clue what was in it and had to re-dig up to find out, we can't re-dig these canisters up. And if it sinks below us and we lose them, the environmental impact is forever and if we lose West Texas oil and natural gas the people of Roswell the people of New Mexico the people of Texas the United States we're done we're not going back to Saudi Arabia and getting there what we need independence and this site is sinking and I truly believe that we need to look at that and it study its environmental impact that's all I have to say thanks thank you I think we have just a two minutes. And after the Midland crew is done, we're going to go to Patty Hughes, Ed Hughes, and we're going to hear from uh, Joy Russell. Go ahead, Jim. Thanks, sir. I appreciate it. My name is Jimmy Carlisle. I work for Fast Cut Oil and Ranch based in Midland. Uh, we are an oil and gas company, but we are also a major landowner in the state of Texas. We own some 200,000 net acres in the state of Texas. Our largest ranch is 165,000 acre contiguous ranch just north and west of Midland. Uh, the WCS site definitely comes into play in this discussion. The Holtec site, however, has the same issues we believe. And Steve mentioned a few moments ago talking about groundwater issues. On our ranches, everything we look at, we look at vegetation, we look at soil characteristics, we look at moisture in the soil. But the thing we watch the closest is the quantity and the quality of our groundwater. Our company is the first one really in West Texas that made the determination to get off of use of fresh water 
in our drilling and fracking operations. And we started recycling produced water and using brackish water as a result. So we believe firmly that the freshwater issue is a major significance that has to be addressed. Steve mentioned the groundwater issues around uh, this site, the Old Tech site, and the lenses and, and the area that is unmapped in the, in the New Mexico system. The state engineer's office has maps. They are going to have complete mapping of what's going on out here. We need a better understanding of groundwater in New Mexico, which we don't have at the moment. We're not alone in this battle when it comes to ranching ranchers that have a real issue with these two sites. Uh, we've secured in less than two hours four letters from major landowners in West Texas. The Cowden Ranch, we've been in the ranching business in West Texas since the 1880s. We received a letter from the Button Estes Ranch, they've been in business for over 100 years. Uh, the Barrow Ranch, been in business since 1906. I don't think I said it. Faskin Oil and Ranch has been in business since 1913. All of these ranches are over 100 years old. Groundwater, folks, is the lifeblood of the ranching business. You don't have groundwater, you just own dirt. Think about that for a second. Bottom line is, we believe that this application and the WCS application need to be withdrawn. We don't believe it. Wow. Amen. <laughs> it is a situation of groundwater because there, if without groundwater in this arid land we live in, we're out of, we don't have anything. And That's Jim, it. could you sum up for us, please? Please understand, we're not against permanent disposal, and I mean permanent, not this 120-year interim stuff. We know, as as was mentioned earlier by Cody. There is an issue with, with this waste that has to be addressed. We agree with that completely. But let's find the real permanent site that doesn't have these issues, that doesn't impact people's lives, that doesn't impact groundwater, and the other things these other folks and all of you folks are talking about. Let's get the right place the first time, move this stuff. If it has to be moved, let's just move it once. That's Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Jim. Hi guys, I'm Christina Renteria. I'm a pilot out in Midland, Texas. Thank you for listening to all of our comments tonight. We really appreciate you guys taking the time to make us know all of us count, our voices count. And thank you to all of you. We come from Texas, we support you guys, and we support not having all of this moved over here. As a pilot, uh, I've flown all around you know, Midland, New Mexico. One thing that we have in common with you guys is oil. Midland's covered in it. You have Hobbs, Eunice, Levington. There's pump jacks everywhere you go. Now, while drilling is not directly associated with earthquakes, the extraction of water, as well as your brine water and basically the redistribution of that, has been proven by scientists at the University of Texas to cause earthquakes with a magnitude of 3.0 or greater. There have been some between 4.8 and 5.8. I think what we need to do is find ground that's completely stable before we plan on moving any of this nuclear waste because we want to make sure it's not going to leak out, obviously. So, oil. We're all involved in it. However, it hasn't been, or the wealth associated with that has not been proportionately allocated to everyone out here. Where, the, um, where this is being proposed is disproportionately not represented here. We have millions of people that could be affected by this project. However, look at this. We have less than 100 people in this room. You know, in Andrews, Texas, there is also a waste site. However, Odessa is one of the closest towns to there. Nobody there knows that it's there. Yeah. The it's citizens are not aware of this, and that is one of the biggest things that needs to change, both in Texas and in New Mexico. We need our voices to be heard. Mm. You know, there's also a disproportionate amount, or there's an age gap here. The people that this will be affecting 80 years from now, no offense to anybody, are not in this room. <laughs> More people. There's one right here. There we go, right here. So I, think I won't you take just a scared. 
I won't take up much of y'all's time, but in conclusion, I don't believe that this is the right area because of the instability of the ground, or the instability of the ground. <coughs> but also simply, we need more people to be involved and more voices to be heard on this. New Mexico, their citizens need to be aware of what's going to be going on with their land. So thank you again for listening, and I hope y'all have a good evening. Okay, thank you. My name is Randy Fred. I'm a county commissioner in Midland, Texas. I've been a county commissioner for 20 years. I just choked myself so my voice is about to go. <laughs> By the way, uh, speaking of uranium, I have titanium in my back, so I kind of like the rare metals. I'm <laughs> standing up right here. I've been elected again for my sixth term, so I'll, if the Lord willing, I'll be serving for 24 years. Um, I am very passionate about this subject. I, I spent over $2,000 to bring our team here from Midland, and uh, I think I, I think we have a great group. I hope you enjoyed meeting them this evening. I'm very yes. proud of them. <laughs> and I will tell you, I had a room in our commissioner's court. We had uh, uh, all the employees of WCS and then some public citizens come try to tell us why this was a good idea to have WCS, which is similar. Um, all the employees of Holtec, I'm sure, are really fine people. All the employees of WCS are fine people. <laughs> They believe they're raising their families there. They, they believe in what they're doing. It's not a matter of bad people. And, and I will just tell you, I said, your oops is going to ruin everything for us for eternity. It, your oops. Our land is the same processes that formed Carlsbad Caverns. I'll repeat something. Are all throughout this whole region. The land is going up and down. The SMU study is one of the first I've, I've heard of. In fact, it just recently came out about some pieces of land have come up 40 centimeters in the last year and some have gone down. We are extracting at a record at 10 to 100 times per year what we've ever extracted from the Permian Basin that I've lived all my life since 1952. We've had oil and gas there for all these years and we're extracting more now by a factor of 10 to 100 than we've ever extracted. So whatever's happening right now will be uh, a greater. Uh, I intend, uh, uh, I intend, I agree with everything my partners said, we need to find one place, one time, and move it. I do know that there is a problem, guys. There's a problem when all these sites in America, they're, they're running out of space. We have 100 sites for potential terrorists to, to attack. It does need to be moved. It does need to be moved safely. It needs to go somewhere safe. But the Navy has proved that things can be moved safely, and so, uh, let's find a real place, like, like a geologist would say, with igneous rock that's hard and solid and not in a place that is subject to oil and gas. And I will tell you one, one, one last thing, so I'll sum up right now, is uh, I intend to organize all the ranchers and all the commissioners' courts and everybody in all the governments in all this whole region. Right now, many of them, I'm, by the way, I will tell you, I'm an odd duck, I'm a Republican. This is not a Republican or Democrat issue. This, this is, a, say, this is a, an important issue for all of us. And I believe that there is, I, I, just, I just cannot tell you the horror that, that could happen if we ever have an accident. Uh, and so I intend to organize all of our governments that are willing to listen. But the way I'm going to do that is get my friend Jimmy and all the ranchers and all the rich Oil men. <laughs> to, Amen. To contact their commissioners and their mayors and their, mayor and their uh, uh, representatives, House representatives, senators, and so forth. And uh, I don't intend to let this thing uh, run over. So thank, thank you, you so much. But thank you. Thank you, Andy. Hi, Kim. Okay, so. And I can hold this for you. Do you want to hold it? Okay. Thank you. My name is Pikea Marcus and I am 11 years old. I'm here on behalf of unborn kids and born kids like me. I think this whole situation is very important because it affects everything and everybody. It affects the plants and wildlife around them. I have recently been writing an essay about ecosystems and how it can be changed and affected and damaged and helped up again and, you know. But um, I read that 
ecosystems can be very easily poisoned through water, air, and soil. Water is, if, it, if all this radiation leaks into the water, everything needs water. Everything that living, that's living needs water. It's going to suck up all of that and it's going to get poisoned. My house, it has a pump. We pump underground water to our house and we use it for everyday necessities. What if that gets poisoned? That we will get poisoned in all of our produce, our, our garden. My dad planted a bunch of trees. Is that gonna get poisoned too? We also are pecan farmers too, and we have, get a living off that too. And we use it for our food. We also, have, we also grow chili, tomatoes, and a lot of other stuff. Is that gonna be affected too? Who is going to be, you know, who's going to give us back all that produce that we just probably lost? Who's going to be, you know, the, who's going to pay for it? Who's going to, like, you know, reimburse us for it? I don't, I've been reading this book on uh, climate change. It says, Radioactivity does contribute to climate change. It doesn't really produce that much carbon dioxide, but at the same time, it still does affect, and if you've seen a microwave, that's radiation. Imagine a microwave in the world. The whole world is a microwave. Microwaves make heat. That's gonna be contributing to climate change. It's gonna be contributing to a lot a whole lot of problems. You may think you might be solving a problem, but really you're just creating more problems to solve. And they might just be forever. You might just not be able to solve them. So um, please do remember that I cannot vote. So you need to vote for this because I don't really have a vote for this. So please do vote against this horrible Horrible mistake. Thank you. 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 Thank you.